Okay, wastewater management. Wastewater is all the water that's going away out of our drains, out of the toilets, the sinks, the water fountains, all the drains. Don't confuse this with storm water. Storm water was the water outside from the rain. Wastewater is the stuff that we're taking out of the building through the drain pipes. Here's what we're going to do in this video. Wastewater management. It's all about reuse, recycle, discharge. So what does reuse mean? Well, we've got really two kind of water that we're talking about. Gray water is relatively clean wastewater. Gray water is water generated from washing clothes, laundry, wash it like in the shower, um, washing your hands at the sink, not toilets, <clears throat> not food particles. Um, this kind of water constitute most of the wastewater that we have that we use in this country. And this could also be water, say, that you were using if you had uh, some kind of machinery like drills or saws that had to be water cooled, water cooled lasers in industrial situations. This is water that is relatively clean when it comes out. Um, this can be reused for irrigation, watering your lawn, watering your garden, or the water that goes in the back of the toilet that's then flushed down with the waste in the toilets. This is one kind of water. This is not hard to treat. We can also recycle. We can have a place on site or off site where we can recycle that water. For instance, that um, factory I talked about that could have a water cooled drill, that water could be treated, filtered, and then put right back into the system without ever leaving the manufacturing place. Discharge and treatment. This is when we're gonna send the water to some kind of water treatment plant. Again, if you had a very large compound, you might even do water treatment there where you are if you have a large building or a large property. Or, and But for most houses and small businesses, we're talking about it being sent off to a publicly owned water treatment facility. And it might look something like this. These are usually run and owned by the state or the county. And they treat the water that comes out of all the pipes and this includes the sewers the pipes and treatment plants so here's basically what they do first they have some kind of primary treatment which is screening if you think about a screen on your window it's like a wire mesh and they literally use smaller and smaller wire mesh to screen out all the large particles that are in there paper and anything else that's gotten in there then the secondary treatment is where they actually have activated sludge which actually has microorganisms in it and those microorganisms go in there and break down all the other pollutants that are in there and then finally before the water gets sent out they disinfect the water to kill the bacteria viruses and protozoa and all that stuff that makes water very unsafe to drink and this is where they add chlorine to the water to make sure that the water we get at our drinking fountain doesn't have a lot of stuff that's going to make us sick. Now talking about code, how does the water get from your house, where all the drains are in your house, out to that water treatment plant? Well, there's code requirements for everything, just as normal. The minimum size for pipes, how deep it has to be, one thing we do not want to happen is we don't want our pipes with our wastewater, our sewage, our water from our toilets, we do not want that water breaking, those pipes breaking and that ending up back in our fresh drinking water. That is something that you'll notice on several of these codes, that is the key thing. We do not want wastewater, sewage getting into our drinking water. So first of all, we're going to bury those pipes at least two foot down and below the frost line so that we don't so it reduces the chance that they're going to break then we're going to talk about slope a little bit more we're talking about how sloped how slanted those pipes are and i'm going to talk about this on the next couple of slides and then separation these are really about keeping the wastewater away from our good water first of all there has to be a 10 foot distance between the good water pipes and the bad water pipes we don't want if these pipes you know some yahoo drives across your lawn we don't want them to crush these two pipes and there to be any chance that 
this water could get in there. Or even tree roots, they'll break pipe sometimes. Again, we don't want this, this to get in there. And even within 10 foot apart, the bad water has to be 18 inches below the good water. If you think the way the ground works, water that if the pipes get broken, the water's going to sink down. So as long as we have them really far apart, 10 foot apart, and the good water is much higher than the bad water, they'll all go straight down and there's very little chance of cross-contamination. Okay. So this is, if we were designing a building, we would count up how many of each of these items we have and multiply times this number here, and then we get a total number for our building. This is the load of the fixtures. How much water are we really going to have coming out of our building? So again, we just count up these items, multiply times this number, and get a total number here of, for our building. We then take that building, that number, and we look here into which one it is. If we had a number of 40, we would need to at least use this one here. If we had a number of 75, we'd at least need to be down here on this section because 75 is too much for this one. And then we say this tells us what diameter of pipe we would need. These smaller pipes are used for houses. And remember on this previous screen, we use 6 and 8 for industrial reasons. And then this is the slope we need. This is how much slope we need per foot of linear distance. So this means drop one eighth of an inch per every foot you go this way. So this is getting more and more sloped as you go down. And this is a picture of what it kind of looks like. This is where it's coming out of our building. So all of our toilets, all of our sinks, everything goes into this pipe right here. And this is the building drain where it comes out. And then we have a sewer line and we call this the lateral line that goes from where the building is out to our sewer main. This is the one out in the out by the street that all the buildings dump into this one out here. There is going to be a clean out up toward the house and probably if you look around your house you'll find a little cap on top of it. It's usually plastic about three or four inches around and this is where if you get a clog the plumbers can go in there and clean out the clogs. And our water's going that way. And we have several elevations. This is our first elevation here at the building. And then our final elevation here where it's going into the sewer main. And this tells us how much drop we have in this vertical direction. And then we have the distance from here to there. Rise of a run is going to give us slope. We're going to assume we're going to dump this in even with the center of this here. If you think about it, it kind of makes sense. If I'm having wastewater coming out of this pipe in there, if I jumped it right at the bottom, what if there's sludge down here at the bottom? Mud has built up down here at the bottom. It could back this pipe up. So they dump this toward the top of the pipe so that it can dump in here. And even if there's a little mud and junk down here at the bottom, it's not going to clog this pipe up. OD means outside diameter of the pipe. Half OD, half the outside diameter. That's really the radius, but they can just call it half OD. This is the crown elevation. And notice that the crown elevation, crown that goes on your head, that's the top of this pipe. So the slope is, it, this looks really complicated, but this is rise, this difference right here, that's rise over run, how far it is, rise over run, regular slope. And it just tells you this, um, so this distance here is this distance here minus this middle part right here, that's our rise. And to get it as a percent, you just multiply it times 100%. You know that. Okay, so another way we could do it, instead of sending it to the city sewers and off to the municipal plant, we could do on-site. And I'm going to continue this in part two of the video.